I manage to play tennis no matter where I travel, and this day my distinguished opponent was Israel's Prime Minister, Itzhak Rabin. Between sets, we had a wonderful chat. Um, if I may, you could answer a question that confuses us a little. Uh, are you Israeli or a Jew? Well, I am a Jew and Israeli. To put it together, an Israeli Jew. I see. That's a question that often comes up. Why? I don't know. People, uh, uh, people in America aren't exactly sure. Well, the essence of Israel is to be a Jewish state. Uh, I believe, we believe, that by having this country, the way that we live here, we fulfill aspirations, dreams of generations of Jews of the last 2,000 years. It doesn't mean that only Jews have to live here. There are Israelis who are not Jewish. But they have to understand that they live in a Jewish state. Right. They have all the equal rights as everybody of us. But the mission, the essence of Israel is to serve as the only country in the world that is Jewish, that develops Jewish culture, that develops Jewish tradition, values, and serves as a place where Jew feels at home. I was curious coming over to Israel, Mr. Prime Minister. We weren't sure exactly what to expect. We wouldn't know whether we'd have a frightening feeling being Why? here, surrounded by 140 million Arabs uh, who don't want you here. And yet when we came here, it's a perfectly safe feeling. It's almost never entered my mind again. See, here we're near the sea. We call it the only friendly border that we have got. But. Uh, it's true that uh, Israel today is uh, almost will celebrate the 29th year of its independence. Through these 28, over 28 years, we have fought many wars. We have never entertained, entertained one day of peace. But still, we are stronger than we were. We feel safer than we were. We believe that we have got the capability to defend ourselves by ourselves and to continue to live. We prefer, we hope, we wish that peace will be achieved. But our existence is not dependent on the will of our neighbors and uh, we have got the power to do it our own way. Then you'll have to remain very strong militarily. Well, unfortunately, we have to be strong enough because our independence depends completely on our strengths. I would say even more than that. The hope to achieve peace is more than dependent on our strengths because with weak Israel, no one will negotiate peace. Uh, what do you anticipate with the new change of government uh, in the United States? We were here in Israel. We were by the Sea of Galilee, as a matter of fact. <coughs> when the young lady who was giving the news said Jimmy Carter has been elected president. That's the first we had heard of it here, which surprised us. Uh, well, it was the right place to hear it. Yes, by the Sea of Galilee. By the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> but we honestly don't know him because he's never held a federal position. He's been governor of a state, the state of Georgia. None of us know much about him or the people that he will bring to government. We can't even anticipate who our secretary of state will be. Although it has been suggested, wouldn't it be very wise of Mr. Carter to suddenly make a grand gesture and keep Dr. Kissinger as Secretary of State? But that might be dreaming, mightn't it? Well, uh, I am in no position to say anything about it. I had the pleasure of meeting twice uh, the president-elect, uh, Mr. Carter. I met him once when I was, a, I was an ambassador of Israel to the United States. He was then the governor of uh, Georgia. I went to Atlanta, it was, uh, I believe, 1970. I met, the, met him there, and uh, we had a very, very interesting talk. He, by the way, said to me, you know, the difference between the two of us, you started, you started your life studying agriculture and became a soldier. I started my life going to the, 
to the Naval Academy at Annapolis and ended <laughs> by going peanuts. Uh, <laughs> it seems that both of us, uh, uh, well, at least reached the highest position. Right. Uh, each one is in his own respective country. What would be your utopian plan for peace, uh, Mr. Prime Minister? How can it ever happen? Well, I believe that once our neighbors will realize that there is no hope for them to destroy Israel by the use of force or to create conditions that our friends will not support Israel, then they'll come to the conclusion that they'll have to reconcile, a stress, to reconcile with Israel. Because the essence of peace is reconciliation, one with the existence of the other one. We have no problem to reconcile with the Arab countries. The absence of peace is because of the lack of readiness on their part to reconcile with us. The Shah of Iran was recently interviewed on national television in um, America. And I'm sure you read his announcement that it's impossible to fight the Jewish lobby in America. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, Mr. Prime Minister? No comment. Uh, I hope that he's right. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you. We've had a magnificent time here in Israel. I can't say enough of nice things about you, uh, all of the people that surround you, all of the citizens of this great state of Israel, and what a thrill to see what you've done in 28 years in building a nation. You're a brave and wonderful people and we'll admire you for the rest of our days and I hope I can come back here. Thank Is there you anything well. you'd like to say to the American people while you have the, the camera there? Well, I'm glad that uh, you've given me the opportunity through your program to say what I've said. And I'm glad that it is done in a very relaxed way. And it's good that the American people will know that we in Israel working, building, sometimes fighting, but we really enjoy our life here. You bet. I hope they'll all come and see the kind of lives you're leading. Thank you, Mr. They're Prime Minister. You're more than welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be right back after this message.